Hello friends, this video is about haploids, double haploids and their applications. I request you to kindly subscribe my channel to get the further notifications and more updates. The term haploid refers to those plants which possess a gametophytic number of chromosomes in their sporophyte. Haploids are very valuable in breeding for several reasons like since they carry only one allele of each gene, mutation and recessive characters are expressed in plant. Plants with lethal genes are eliminated from the gene pool. They can produce homozygous diploid or polyploid plants that is valuable in plant breeding. Haploidy can shorten the time for inbreeding for production of superior hybrid genotypes. Coming to the historical aspects of haploidy, in 1953, Tulek obtained haploid culture but no plants derived from Jingo biloba. In 1964, Guha and Maheshwari reported direct development of embryos from microspore of Datura inoxia. That means they gave birth to embryo or uh, anther culture. In 1967, Borgin and Nish obtained a complete haploid plants of Nicotiana tabacum. The history of double haploids begin with the observation of natural sporophytic haploid in the Thurastomanium reported by Bergner in 1921. This was followed by similar discoveries in other plant species like Nicotiana tabacum and Nicotiana compactum. First report on haploid production was published by Blacksley in 1922 in Datura Stromanium. Guha and Maheshwari in 1964 and 66 developed in vitro anther culture technique for the production of haploid Datura inoxia plants. Haploids were reported in many plant species like barley by Kasha and Kao in 1970, tobacco by Burke and co workers in 1979 rice, maize, brassica, etc. Comparing the methods of producing haploids, there are two methods to develop the haploids. One is in vitro and one is in vivo. In in vitro method, the tissue culture techniques are used like we can in general say culture methods. The anther culture or microspore culture have high complex and expensive low plantlet regeneration rate which is dependent on genetic background and these are greatly limited for application in plant breeding whereas in vivo that is genetic induction is widely used method involves use of inducer lines high frequency of haploid generation simple to operate and relatively inexpensive coming to a elaborative view of haploid production systems there are two categories as I already told you in the last slide, in vitro and in vivo technique. In vitro method is about the culture techniques like anther culture and ovule culture. In ovule culture only we can call it either ovule culture or ovary culture. If we are using ovary means that will become ovary culture and if we will be using ovule means that will be ovule culture. Ovule is the inner part of ovary or the seeds the part from which we obtain the seeds is ovule and the fruit wall or fruit what we obtain is ovary where the fertilization takes place coming to anther culture in this production of haploid plants from microspore this is for the production of haploid reported in about 250 species like solanaceae cruciferae graminae ranunculaceae are the most common one for ovule culture that is called as gynogenesis, here production of haploid plants from unfertilized egg cells. Coming to in vivo methods, in vivo methods have three popular techniques like parthenogenesis, apogamy and chromosomal elimination. The first one is spontaneous induction in this examples are maize and linum. Second is artificial induction by external stimuli. There are four external stimuli. One is irradiation, then wounding, temperature, chemical. In irradiation, we can get the haploid plants in crepes and wheat. 
by wounding or injury oenothera tobacco maize through temperature treatment haploid induction is possible in datura and sikel and by chemical treatment populus and capsicum the third method is delayed pollination that is in maize white hybridization in solanum tuberosum the delayed pollination in maize i'll just uh, throw a light on this delayed pollination means pollination after 15 days of the silk emergence how it is achieved we will be covering the silk portion with silk bag and after 15 days we will be going for the pollination that will give some extent of haploid production in the set seeds remember i am discussing in vivo methods in this slide and the next slide the fifth one is alien cytoplasm that is used in wheat haploid inducing genes there are two types of haploid inducing genes there are many types but uh, majorly two one is independent gametophyte used in maize and haploid initiator gene hap gene in barley next is semigamy this is reported in cotton and arabidopsis pseudogamy used in potato and strawberry chromosome elimination in somatic reduction example in sorghum then with the help of chloramphenicol parafluorophenyl alanine and uh, colchicine these are the three chemicals which induce haploids this is chemically induced haploid production then barley haploidy by crossing with bulbosum and wheat haploid by wheat into maize cross these two techniques i'll explain in the future slides coming to two types of haploids the two types of haploids can be classified in the previous slides also we classified the haploids but this is another kind of uh, classification based on the origin of parent either it is paternal or maternal in case of paternal there is it is called as inducer the importance is effective for converting high combining seed parent lines to isogenic cms analogs in maternal haploids that is the cytoplasm is donor that is rapid development of completely homozygous inbred lines to explain the androgenesis we'll just throw a light on floral organ of male male has two portions or we can say the endosium has two parts one is anther and filament and there is a male organ consist of uh, anther ball pollen microsporangium microspores are produced inside the anthers there are mostly four microspores in a single anther filament is a stalk like structure the only function is to hold the anther then pollen is immature male gametophyte the pollen development stages the tetrad stage is most preferred for haploid generation this is how microsporogenesis and microgametogenesis occur this is just to show you how the pollen final formation in cellular stage happens but the most preferred one is tetrad stage which is obtained in microsporogenesis process coming to androgenesis in this haploid plants derived from male gametophyte of angiosperm plants that is in vitro haploid induction haploids can be obtained by culture of excised anther and culture of isolated pollens factors influencing androgenesis gem genotype of the donor plant other ball factors culture mean and culture density stage of microspore or pollen development effect of temperature or light and physiological status of donor plant there are certain other factors also but these are the major factors genotype that responds to genotypically determined depending on the species in cereals there is a major genetic component controlled by many genes in plants like tobacco genotype is less important the anther wall factors the specific components are not known for this factor addition of anther wall extracts however promotive in tobacco in some plants glutamine alone 
is in combination with serine and myoinositol replaced the cell factors. This is a flow diagram of how angiogenesis occurs. First, the parental plants are selected, then select flower bud. From there, go for microspore development stage determination either through dye staining, sieves reagent, or acetocarmine or aceto arsine solution treatment. Then, surface sterilize the young flower buds. From that, isolate the anther or microspore from buds. Inoculate the anther on appropriate medium and finally regenerate and check the recovery of plants. The first one is effect of culture medium. Two hormonal groups, one is without hormone and one is with hormone. In without hormone, it is used mostly in dicots, means in dicot, hormones are le very less preferred. Most sources with solanaceous crops do not want and revolve from callus. With hormone means here, callus development is required. It is used in most non solanaceous species in many monocots. Require hormone or complex organic uh, like coconut milk. Coming to the other factors influencing androgenesis, one is density, another is atmospheric volume of the vessel, then density of pollen or anther. In Brassica napus, minimum density required is 3000 pollens per ml of culture medium. Stages of development of microspore or pollen development, the, there must be shift from gametic to sporophytic pattern of development. Best time to induce such a shift is either just prior to division of the microspore or after microspore mitosis. The haploid embryo formation is based on continued division of vegetative or generative cell or embryos are derived from continued proliferation of either of these cells rather than pollen formation. Haploid embryo formation is based on symmetric division of microspore rather than asymmetric division that leads to pollen formation most common path of haploidy. The normal pollen development is explained in this slide. The pollen mother cells are in the anther primordia. In first phase, that is meiosis, the pollen mother cells will lead to tetrad formation. The tetrad forms from each pollen mother cell. In the second phase, microspores released from tetrads. In the third phase, microspores mature into pollen grains. That leads to first pollen mitosis. In the second pollen mitosis, Maybe after germination, it gives vegetative and generative cells formation. This is the pathway of androgenesis where the normal microspore will with the different pathways will give rise to different stages of embryogenesis. That is the normal pollen development. This slide is about the haploid induction, how the haploid plants is generated in the culture medium. After anther culture, the another one is isolated microspore culture. Microspores are nothing but these are the minute structures which are produced inside the anther. These are of interest because formation of embryo is known to be from one cell only and thus no cameras are formed. Much more difficult than anther culture, cultured either isolated microspore or pollen. In this, uh, the major it is practiced in Brassica oleracea. The pollen were a left in hanging drops that leads to form a, a release of the microspores. So then isolated microspore culture will be done on the filter paper. The culture medium requirement for anther culture, essential micro and uh, macronutrients are sucrose, vitamins, bicellular pollen types require 2 to 4 percent and tricellular types 6 to 12 percent sucrose. Microspore or pollen culture for this bicellular pollen types only 
that require basal components plus glutamine, serine and elevated level of inositol. Hormone dependency are as follows. Hormone independent group in this embryos directly form from the microspore predominantly bicellular pollen types example tobacco. In hormone dependent type that is by your dry cellular pollen type and plants are regenerated through a callus intermediary typically require auxin and in some instances cytokinin example in grasses. The important growth regulators used in in vitro culture are low level of auxin, cytokinin and gibberellins. Wheat anthers cultured on the medium having 2,4-D produce callus while those kept on a medium supplemented with coconut milk give rise to embryo. Factors affecting development of the haploid plant in vitro. The anther stage that is most represented or responsive cells for haploid embryo formation are those between tetrad stage of microsporogenesis to just past the first pollen mitosis. Donor plant or anther pretreatment that enhances haploid embryo formation. Cold pretreatment of anthers either pre or post culture treatment that is uh, 3 to 5 degrees Celsius for 2 to 4 days lead to enormous number of <coughs> haploid development from the anthers. This is the pathway of cold treatment at generative and vegetative phases. Coming to the in vitro morphogenesis of pollens, there are two things one is direct androgenesis and another is indirect androgenesis. In direct androgenesis, normal embryogenesis occur as the plant family Solanaceae and Brassicaceae where this is devoid of callus formation. But in indirect androgenesis, the callus has to be produced as an intermediate between pollen formation and the haploid production that occurs in barley, wheat and coffee. This is the process how the direct and indirect embryogenesis or haploid plantlet formation happens. After the pollen embryo formation when it passes through the torpedo heart, cotyledonary and other stages as uh, it passes from pro embryo to embryo stage it will be cultured in the test tube after that two types of haploid plants plantlets can be obtained one is through direct and another is through indirect in the direct form there won't be callus as you can see in the right side corner there are two charts or two pathways where we can get the inner one is direct one and the outer one is indirect haploid plantlet formation. This is just an explanation to the previous slide. Associated problem with anther culture. Anthers fail to grow, embryos fail to continue growth. Developing tissue or callus may be diploid or polyploid. In this, chimera of different ploidy may result. The major problems in in vitro culture are chimera formation and mosaism. Formation of albino in cereals. Albino is also a major problem, especially in rice. Then low success rate, not commercially viable. Use of growth regulators for callus production usually detrimental for haploid production since diploids and polyploid cells are produced. Doubled haploids sometimes are not homozygous that leads to segregation in the progeny. Segregation in the progeny always lead to ununiformity or it will make heterozygosity in the population. Coming to gynogenic haploids. Gynogenesis is nothing but ovule or ovary culture and by that obtaining the haploids. The in definition it is uh, given as haploid plants derived from megaspore or female gametophyte of an angiosperm plant. Haploids can be obtained by culture of excised ovary and ovule. 
in vitro culture of unpollinated ovaries and ovules represent an alternative for the production of haploid plants in species for which anther culture has given unsatisfactory results. It is used in plant families that do not respond to androgenesis, example Liliaceae compositae. The first report on uh, induction of gynogenesis haploids was given in Barley by San Neum in 1976. Coming to ovule culture, haploids can be induced from ovule. Number of ovules is less and thus is used less than anther culture because the number of progenies or the haploid plants obtained from anther culture are more than the ovule because per plant the number of anthers are more as compared to number of ovules that may be organogenesis or embryogenesis used in plant families that do not respond to androgenesis like liliaceae and compositae the pathway of gynogenesis first selection of uh, healthy parent plant from there check ovary or ovule development stage by histology Select appropriate flower bud and surface sterilization. Inoculation of ovary or ovule in suitable medium. From medium, inoculation of ovary or ovule culture that is incubated. Then re regeneration of callus or embryo. From there, haploid plants are recovered. In the gynogenesis, the major step is identification of maternal haploids. The maternal haploids are identified because this in homozygous form will give the proper regenerated plants. For example, here the H embryo, one is inducer and one is donor. Here donor is female and inducer is a male. In this cross, the F1 embryo should be a maternal haploid. For that it should be having all the parts. The culture medium for gynogenesis, the normal white or MS or N6 inorganic salt media supplemented with growth substances, sucrose as a carbon source. Some of the factors influencing gynogenesis are genotype of donor plant, growth conditions of the donor plant, stages of harvest of ovule, embryo sac stage, culture medium and physical factors. The bulbosum technique that is haploid production by bulbosum method. Here pollen is collected from plant of hordium bulbosum, a wild relative of cultivated barley that is hordium vulgare. From there the bulbosum pollen is brushed onto emasculated barley florets. A hybrid zygote form but during the first few cell divisions hordium bulbosum chromosomes are eliminated. The seeds that develop contain haploid embryo with one set of hordium vulgare chromosomes. The haploid plants can be treated with colchicine to obtain doubled haploids or else the bulbosum technique is mainly used to induce the haploidy. This is a haploid embryo must be germinated in vitro in order to generate the diploids or double haploids. That means bulbosum technique involve both in vitro as well as in vivo method. The haploid induction through hybridization. This is an another technique, a new method where the plants are manipulated by centromere specific histone CENH3. When the mutant CENH3 in recessive form expressed abnormal CENH3 is crossed with wild type, chromosomes from the mutant are eliminated and then eventually the haploids are produced. This method could be applied to any plant because CENH3 is universal in eukaryotes. Coming to spontaneous haploids, naturally occurring haploids in 71 species representing 39 genera in 16 families of angiosperms induce spontaneous haploids example agropyron, alfalfa, citrus, peach, trillium. Gymnosperms example unique haploids from Tucha plicata. 
Cultivar development has utilized these naturally occurring haploids like Kleene Lebing is a haploid cultivar of Pelargonium zonale. Merglobe is a double haploid cultivar of tomato. All these are spontaneous haploids. This is the procedure of in vivo haploid induction. From the bulbosum technique, we can say that is in vivo haploid production. In the different kinds of in vivo haploid production, the common mechanism is first the maternal inducer and paternal inducer. For example, this is a flowchart in uh, um, Ig gene of maize. When both are uh, brought together in the F1, the two complements, one is from maternal and paternal when the f2 population is generated or when f1 is selfed we can expect the hybrid as well as the haploids or doubled haploids the same condition is observed or obtained when maternal inducer is crossed with f1 and paternal inducer is crossed with f1 that means double haploids can be directly produced or haploids are obtained from this kind of crosses Coming to wide hybridization, interspecific or intergenic crosses in which pollinator chromosomes are eliminated have been used successfully to produce maternal haploids. Example in barley, hordium vulgarin to bulbosum, as I already uh, explained here, vulgar is used as female and bulbosum as male. That was explained by Kasha and Cavo in 1970. The other similar kind of hybridization Techniques were obtained in wheat, wheat into maize, titicale, titicale into maize, rye into maize and oats into maize. Embryo rescue is a necessary part of this technique as endosperm does not develop and therefore cannot provide nutrients for continuous development of embryo. So in vitro a technique is a tool or aid to keep the embryos intact. Coming to wheat into maize system, here first the wheat spikes are selected and wheat is taken as female and maize is taken as male. The wheat anthers are removed and maize pollens are collected and pollinated on the uh, wheat spikelet. Then to avoid the embryo abortion, embryos are rescued, then cultivated embryos were uh, cultivated on the petri plate or in growth media then it will start regenerating haploid plants are obtained if we need double haploids means by colchicine treatment the doubling of chromosomes can be expected coming to parthenogenesis it is also one of the method of obtaining the haploids in this method egg cell develop into an embryo without fertilization by the sperm nucleus this can be achieved by pollination with irradiated pollen or with addition of chemicals there is generally a low frequency of haploid recovery and therefore parthenogenesis is not widely used in breeding purpose in order to generate the haploids however this method was um, practiced in dianthus helianthus anus that is sunflower uh, impatiens haukeri lilium Mimolus, Petunia, Rosa, Tradicentia, etc. Coming to the techniques to identify haploids. With morphological observations or else we can say morphological markers. This is uh, differentiated with the help of color chart. Uh, in this picture we can see the haploid, the A picture that is haploid which is having light green color compared to other ploidy levels means the ploidy level can be easily differentiated with the color formation either it may be flower or leaf or any part of the plant the second technique is chloroplast number in stomatal guard cells as you can see in this picture the haploids are having 19 stomata diploid with 30 and triploid with 52 chloroplasts that means the number of chloroplasts increase with the increase in ploidy number in anthurium and in chrysanthemum also the similar things were observed. 
the third technique is chromosomal count and flow cytometry flow cytometry is a technique in order to get the the curve which will give the ploidy level for example in the last figure the plant is dis displaying triploid histogram next is dna fingerprinting rapd aflp rflp and cap markers are commonly used in dna fingerprinting in order to identify the haploids because in this kind of techniques the haploids are identified based on number of bands produced per lane when the ssr markers are used to identify the haploids the only method is the known flanking markers must be reported and that will give the exact haploid or the ploidy level coming to agricultural applications of haploids the first and foremost is production of homozygous lines example marglobe tomato that is a doubled haploids second is hybrid sorting that refers to selection of recombinant superior gametes example f Two double one in tobacco, Hyule two in rice, Yohana one and two in wheat, Maya's haplona, Mary's haplona in case of Brassica napers. Third thing is shortening the breeding cycle. Only four to five years will be taken in haploid production as compared to ten years in conventional method. Analytical breeding. It is selection at haploid level and improved dye haploids used for chromosome doubling example potato generation of exclusive male asparagus because males are commercially preferred in asparagus because of their showy and wide uh, leaf forming habit next is mutation research example in tobacco cell line resistant to methionine sulfoxamide and wildfire cytogenetic research to determine the basic chromosome number polyploidy and production of alien addition and substitution lines in wheat this is applicable evolutionary studies to identify the exact ploidy level and the genetic constitution of the plants then genetic studies like for hybrid development and indirect selection like in rice example is vachio by coming to double haploids in maize this will include the production how double haploids will be helpful in maize and different practices its advantage disadvantage it's a valuable tool in maize research establishment of double haploid mapping population will help in improve the precision of genetic and mapping studies analysis of linkage disequilibrium analysis of haplotype or trait association accelerate the gene pyramiding evaluation exploitation and conservation of genetic resources extraction of individual gametes from heterozygous material transferring them into double haploid lines determine detrimental effects are revealed to the full extent from the very beginning conservation of germplasm in the form of reproducible double haploid lines the technological challenges in production of double haploid lines first and foremost is questions relating to inducers inducers are the material which are helpful in natural induction of the haploids here alternative or improved marker systems increased induction rate adaptation to us or different uh, climate or photoperiodism genetic and biology of induction mechanism question relating to genome doubling or genetic background effect optimized product procedure procedure without colchicin and increased doubling or success rate coming to production of uh, maternal haploids using in vivo method in this there are three steps one is identification of haploid artificial chromosome doubling and self pollination of for seed multiplication coming to haploid inducer lines 
inducer specialized genetic stocks which when crossed to a diploid maize plant result in progeny kernels in an ear with segregation from diploid kernels and certain functions of fractions of haploid kernels are produced due to anomalous fertilization. Kernels with haploid embryo have a regular triploid endosperm and therefore these kernels are capable of displaying germination similar to those kernels with a diploid embryo. There are two kinds of inducers, one is temperate inducer and one is tropical inducer. The major or commonly used temperate inducers in temperate countries are KMS, WS14, KEMS, MHI, RWH, then UH400, PK6, CAU, HOI and PHI. Coming to the tropical inducers, stock 6. WS14, KEM, S, RWS, PK6, and UH400. KEM, S, RWS, and UH14 are commonly used. Here I am giving a protocol how CIMIT is developing the double haploid lines. They are using one of the following given in the back slide or uh, this slide. The inducers are used and heterozygous source germplasms are taken. They also need the laboratory techniques and color marker in order to differentiate the ploidy level of the scutellum or uh, the endosperm. Induction in yellow and uh, white donors with the help of different uh, colors of the kernel the, the, it can be identified here to differentiate we cannot take the cob or the natural inbred which is having purple color because purple color is a pigment or a color which is used as a marker in order to identify the ploidy level in the scutellum. Uh, to identify the haploid kernel first one is donor that is colorless that is uh, crossed with an inducer that is purple embryo and alluron the identification of haploid embryo is based on alluron and scutellum color if both are in uh, purple form that is that means they are in haploid for haploid level regular diploid f1 seed purple embryo and purple alluron and haploid means purple alluron and purple scutellum next is haploid kernel selection to select them the skilled workers with the light good light system they will identify the three kinds of uh, seeds first one the cat one that is a control which, uh, which does not have any pigment and we cannot detect that body level means that is a failure then regular f1 uh, when the color is uh, observed in alluron layer as well as scutellum that is a haploid and rest of the things are di discarded or the embryo and uh, alluron pigmented seeds are taken as diploids in the third step artificial genome doubling the first step generation of hap germination of haploid plants then cutting the coleoptile on three consecutive days a small cut is given in order to enhance the growth and intake of the colchicin to enhance the intake of colchicin 0.06 percent of colchicin 0.5 percent of dmso solution is given for eight hours here colchicin acts as a mitotic inhibitor overnight colchicin treatment is given in the next step planting into pots recovery and establishing of treated plants based on that the double haploid or the plants which are obtained from this technique or the small seedlings are transplanted to the field the work of colchicin it is an alkaloid produced by colchicium atom nail 
It works as mitotic inhibitor by binding to tubulin during mitosis, inhibits spindle formation so that cell cannot split into two daughter cells. That means it will keep the haploids in double form or in doublet or diploid form or double haploid. We cannot call it as diploid but it is a doubled haploid. Like this the co colchicine will work. The other uh, chromosomal doubling agents are nitric oxide, microtubule binding herbicides like 2,4-D. Mm, this will lead to chromosomal doubling of root tip cells. The step 4 is self pollination. The ground plants in and planted in field are self pollinated. The self pollination is successful only when enormous pollen is produced by that particular plant. Elimination of false plant will be taken like uh, segregants. Wicker and uh, tillering should be checked. Stock color should be checked and endosperm and embryo color are major factors here. The gist of this is first one by continuous selfing the vigor is lost 99% of homozygous inbred lines are obtained by continuous selfing but that takes around 6 to 7 generation but by the double haploid technology when heterozygous source population is taken and in vivo double in double haploid induction or chromosomal doubling from d0 to d1 step leads to 100% homozygous lines this only takes two to three generations. The chromosomal doubled haploid mechanism can also be in, uh, combined with other approaches in order to take get the greater resolution and higher efficient results. For that we can take a desired source population. From there we can subject it to genomic selection where we will uh, develop the breeding and training population and uh, this will be evaluated in air around nurseries. The DH seeds derived in improved populations from GS population, seed DNA based genotyping and mass using breeder ready markers for specific target traits and genomic selection for discarding lines with paternal uh, potential weaknesses. Then high throughput and desirable phenotyping of double haploid test crosses for grain yield and other target traits. Finally, identification of best bet bread hybrid varieties released and seed delivery. Coming to applications of double haploid lines. Significantly, it shortens the breeding cycle in development of uh, completely homozygous lines in two generations simplifies logistics including requiring less time labor financial resource for development of the new breeding lines time and resources the saved could be potentially channelized for implementing more effective selections and for accelerated release of allied cultivars it enables greater efficiency and precision of selection especially when used in combination with molecular markers and year around nurseries accelerates production development by allowing rapid pyramiding of favorable alleles for polygenic traits influencing maize productivity and stress resilience which are otherwise difficult and time consuming to combine in adapted germplasm using conventional breeding practices perfectly it fulfill the requirements of dust for plant varietal protection due to the complete homozygosity and homogeneity of double haploid based parental lines. It reduces the effort for line maintenance. It can be combined with molecular markers to facilitate access to germplasm present within either the female or male parental lines or hybrid cultivars. It provides opportunity for undertaking marker trait association studies or association uh, mapping studies, marker based gene integration, functional genomics, molecular cytogenetics and genetic engineering. 
advantages of double haploid techniques accelerating inbred development putative hybrid uh, formation that is a beginning step then uh, maximum additive variance is available reduction of masking effect which are caused by residual heterozygosity reduction of cost for nursery and maintenance breeding work and simplicity logistics this is a gist of the previous slide in terms of the genetic improvement here there is a approach called a trait or gene stacking which can be easily done through double haploid induction in this approach line 1 and line 2 are taken and they are crossed one is in one approach selfing is done and one is double haploid induction is made the goal is to fix the target alleles fine in this table there is an explanation to give the better insight or differentiation between how the stacking efficiency will be in number of genes in f2 and double haploids for example if there is one gene in f2 the fixation rate is 0.25 whereas in double haploids it is 0.5 if we'll take the 16 genes the possibility of fixing the target gene in f2 is very very minute but in double haploid we can find it better than the f2 population this is uh, one of the application shortening the breeding cycle how it can be achieved is given in this particular uh, figure like uh, with the conventional uh, breeding method we will take f2 f3 f4 f5 in order to achieve the homozygosity but through double haploidy just by uh, doubling the f1 we will get the double haploid lines double haploid with marker assisted selection with the help of uh, marker assisted back crossing recurrent selection and all those things the double haploids can be directly obtained in order to get the introgression lines without wasting much time in continuous back crossing in order to avoid the linkage drag new plant breeding technique in this homozygous parental line of selected homozygous plants are reproduced the recombination process is uh, taken care here only non transgenic plants are selected thus offering selected parental lines would not carry the additional genomic charges that means this is a technique of uh, manipulating the cytological techniques and combining it with the modern molecular techniques in order to get the better insight and quick get uh, obtaining the quick double haploid lines coming to recessive mutant identification haploids are extremely useful for detecting the recessive mutants which may not express themselves in the heterozygous diploid background and therefore can be easily lost so here i am linking this uh, with the qpm maze production where the qpm mutant is a recessive that is opaque 2 and from this pro this particular approach like haploid production the mutants are easily multiplied or double haploids are produced and that can be a base material in order to generate the single crosses and improve the QPM lines. Then haploids are useful for uh, improving the diversity or maintaining and introducing a tremendous diversity in the inbred lines. Coming to QTL mapping, this is a, a table giving differentiation between different populations like uh, double haploids are used as population, F2 derived F3, real population, double haploids and backcross populations are used in different uh, mapping approaches like linkage mapping, QTL mapping and uh, other studies. The strength and weaknesses are discussed 
and differentiated between F2 derived F3 population, real double haploids and back crossing. Among these four, the real and double haploid populations are more efficient. In comparison, real and nil populations are used in high resolution mapping whereas F2 and uh, derived F3 and back crosses are only used in the preliminary studies. Double haploid lines are also considered less efficient because of the meiotic cycles. The only one meiotic cycle is found in double haploid population whereas RIL is genetic by repeated meiotic cycle that means repeated recombination process. Coming to F2 derived F3, the strength is speed of production and estimation is easy. Weakness is heterogeneous population. The same thing is observed in back cross uh, population. Uh, here, heterogeneous families. Rill is homogeneous family, power of QTL detection, but small, uh, slow production is a problem. In double haploid, speed of production, homozygous families, and power of QTL detection, the weakness is laborious production process but and less recombinant cycles. Comparing the double haploid production approaches in maize, the three approaches are in vitro method, in vivo paternal method and in vivo maternal method. The strength of in vitro method is no need of inducer but weakness is low induction rate, genotype dependency and need of tissue culture for that sophisticated laboratory technology and high input requirement is essential. The in vivo parental is a simple inheritance and used for CMS conversion, but low induction rate is a problem in in vivo paternal. The third kind is in vivo maternal. This is limited genotype dependency. Induced rate is 10%. The background effect and complex inheritance are problems in maternal in vivo induction, but in vivo maternal and in vitro methods are um, used mostly in uh, production of double haploid lines. This is how rapid line and population improvement is uh, done by using double haploid technology in the different subpopulations. Here interlinking strategy to using superior lines from the subpopulation started one year after the subpopulation under consideration exemplified for two-stage test cross selection. TC1, TC2 are first and second test cross evaluation and RE is recombination here. Double haploid lines express uniformity within the line and diversity among the lines. By taking the conventional and double haploids, the uniformity is obtained within few generation up to four generation in double haploids. The steps are generation of F1, crossing F1 into inducer, then treating and selfing the D0 and selfing and generating D1. D1 is a double haploid population whereas D0 is ready to get double haploidy that is in haploid condition. Whereas in conventional process there is a long procedure to generate F1, then F2, then F2 derived F3, F3 derived F4. Like that, there is a lot of procedure in order to generate the homozygous lines. Coming to conventional versus double haploid inbred line development, the homozygosity attended in different generations in uh, conventional is from in S7 it is 99.23 percent but in double haploid produced by repeated generations of uh, selfing is uh, the conventional method but in double haploid 100 percent homozygosity is attained by selection and with the induction of double haploid this is a quicker method to obtain 100 percent pure line breeding the other advantages of double haploids, this can represent a new variety, maybe a self-pollinated crop, inducing mutations. These are also valuable tools in marker trait associated studies, mass 
and genomic selection based breeding and functional genomics. It can be used in cytogenetic research and genetic engineering. Useful in developing chromosome substitution lines, QTL mapping, genetic and physical mapping. Hope you liked this video. Thank you for watching.